There's a lot that we need to be concerned about in 2017. But one thing we don't have to worry about is having plenty of science fiction to fill our eye holes. That's right, we're gonna run down our top 10 most anticipated television and movies science fiction for the year 2017, right after this. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Here's Popcorn Talks Sci-Fi Weekly. Hey guys, welcome back to Sci-Fi Weekly, the show where we break down everything from the realm of visual science fiction. I'm sure I'm tweaking that opening. Okay. Um, we're working on it. We're working. If you have pitches for how I should open the show, send them to us. I think we talk everything sci-fi. Yeah, everything sci-fi. Well, this is a punchier way. Whatever. Hey guys, I'm Zach Wilson, and that was some uh, some classic Zach Wilson, Jesse Klein banter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you want to follow the show, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, at uh, Sci-Fi Weekly. Uh, be sure to follow the Popcorn Talk on YouTube, at Popcorn Talk Network, or on Twitter, at The Popcorn Talk. Uh, I'm your host, Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter Instagram, at That Zach Wilson. And Jesse Klein is back this week. Hey, everyone. I'm so happy to be back. I, I'm sorry I was out for a week. I, I caught a space virus. Uh, but I, I'm back, and I'm, I'm super excited about science fiction in the year 2017. Did, did I, those only last a week, or should I be worried? Oh, I, I am a clone. <laughs> I am a clone of my old self. My old self died. Eh, I'll, take, I'll choose to take the side that... Uh, a clone is just the same person. It is. It's basically the same person. Yeah. I want to murder everyone, but other than that, the same thing. Eh, about uh, the same. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> at JessKlein1. That's J-E-S-S-K-L-E-I-N, the number one. Yes, and we're going to be running down, as we said in the opening, our top ten films or and movies, or shows and movies. TV shows and movies. Uh, that we're looking forward to in 2017. Uh, before we do, there's some news we got to talk about, and we got to do it so quickly. Let's move at ludicrous, ludicrous speed. speed. The Walking Dead has said it will tone down its violence after fans uh, reacted that the uh, opening premiere for this season felt a little bit too much like torture porn. And th that torture porn is a quote from Gail Ann Hurd. Yeah. Uh, so next season, they're going to change the rules. And the only way that you can kill a zombie is a vigorous hug or tersely worded letter. Ooh. My mom's going to be great at killing zombies. <laughs> she sends a lot of tersely worded letters. Paper cut off the head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, CBS and Axonar filmmakers settle the Star Trek lawsuit. Uh, the feature will be released as two 15-minute shorts. I'm really excited to see that. Um, said the lead prosecutor, We won, citing the case of needs of many versus needs of few. <laughs> needs of few. <laughs> Uh, Logan, the Wolver or Wolverine three, yeah. uh, depending on uh, how you're talking about it, will be apparently set in a different universe, according to Hugh Jackman. Uh, he says that it was changed to just to help it uh, be a better story, uh, not to be bogged down in, in lore between the two competing Time travel. timelines. Um, hopefully, this is a universe where the movies are good after X two. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, it was revealed that NBC's Powerless underwent some major re rewrites recently and that the initial pilot will not make it to air. One of these rewrites includes that Alan Tudyk's character running the insurance company is now known as Van Wayne. That's Bruce Wayne's cousin. This brings up a lot of big questions, but the big one is if Bruce's parents died and he still turned out to be the Batman, then he is the worst cousin that ever existed. <laughs> He didn't visit him once. He didn't say <laughs> he didn't say hi to your dead aunt and uncle's kid once. They didn't like adopt him, maybe. Yeah, what? Something. What's the deal? Uh, AMC announced that they are going to be producing a science fiction documentary series with James Cameron. Oh, that's pretty very cool. cool. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter says that it's called James Cameron's Story of Science Fiction, oh, yeah. uh, and it's going to go over sort of the history and the uh, the evolution, the chronicling sci-fi. Sci uh, well, AMC, uh, if you need people who can't stop talking about science fiction and are <clears throat> self-proclaimed experts, uh, 
I know two guys. These two guys. There's two guys. There's two of us. There's two guys right here. We could be like your I love the 80s, like Ooh, your Moraka. guys. Ooh. <laughs> Together we are one Moraka. <laughs> 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 Uh, let's play a little bit of good news, bad news with Star Trek. Um, the good news is is that Star Trek Discovery has added James Frain. Uh, he's best uh, known for his roles in Agent Carter, Gotham, and Grimm, and among others. And he's going to play Spock's father, Sarek. This is huge as far as like what will happen with storylines and what we get to see in the, as the seasons play out. I mean, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, but then there's the bad news. Uh, CBS announced that, Dis that Star Trek Discovery has been officially pushed back again. Uh, it was supposed to come out in February. Now it's then it was pushed to May. Now we're looking at it. it we don't know. They haven't announced. Uh, the rumor is that it's because of Sonequa Martin Green's Walking Dead shooting schedule, okay. um, since she's set to play the lead role. Um, but they're, they haven't told us, there's no official release date. And I feel like CBS is being cruel at this point. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're basically, they're, they consistently announce like awesome casting and then push back the show. So it's like two bullies throwing your hat back and forth, uh, in the sixth grade, which is definitely not a real memory of mine. Why didn't you just grab your hat when it was over your head? They were too tall. Oh, I'm a short man, Jesse. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of CBS, the network has officially picked up a pilot from the Martian author, Alan Weir, called Mission Control. If we ever get to see it, I'm sure we'll love it. Yep. I'm still bitter. One space show at a time, CBS. Give us Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan has said that he wants to direct an episode of Stranger Things Season 2. Oh. Uh, if they are, if they're looking. Yeah. Uh, the Duffer Brothers, who he, he worked directly with on Wayward Pines, uh, then reportedly asked, so is, the, is this going to be like Invincible Sixth Sense, M. Night Shyamalan, uh, or, or is, are you, like, is this like Lady in the Water, Last Airbender <laughs> Shyamalan? Because like, we got to know can, can before, you... before we sign anything. Can you just announce you want to direct an episode of something? Well, I think they're friends. Okay. So it's like... Because I want to direct an episode of Stranger Things. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm officially announcing that. Well, because they, they, they work together on a show. I yeah. think he said he, they were, he was at their house and was like, Yo, you need a director? Are they eating tapas? <laughs> they're probably eating 80s food. Yeah, probably. Know, whatever that is. All right, let's slow it down. Emergency break. Uh... Slow it down to regular speed news, because uh, this one needs some more discussion. Uh, this was cool. Yeah. Um, Ready Player One, and I only found this. I put together the rundown for today, and then I got a Google News alert. There's Ready Player One news. Yeah. Uh, so they, uh, Ty Sheridan, who's going to play Parzival Yeah. In the movie, uh, was talking about the shooting schedule and. Uh, what it's been like to shoot it, and he he told everyone that uh, the Oasis, uh, if you're not familiar with it, the Oasis, is a virtual reality world that most people in in this world in this universe like live in. They yeah. they go to work in the Oasis, they go they go to school in the Oasis, all this stuff, um, and the movie apparently is going to be sixty percent set in the Oasis. Okay, yeah. Um, 40% in the real world. And all of the Oasis part of the movie is going to be motion capture. Yeah, interesting. So they spent like four, four or five weeks in just Mo doing just motion doing capture. Just yeah. Uh, between, like, between all the actors. Um, so, I don't know, do you th does that work? Like, it, to have an extended... Like, 60% of a movie is a lot. That's a lot. Uh, I don't know, I mean... I think it works for what they're doing. I think if they really want to make it feel like they're in a video game, which is what they are, I think you mm -hmm. kind of have to do that. Uh, it's just, I feel like it, they've got to make it look real stylized, is all I've got to say. Like, don't try and make it look real, and don't try, try and make it look like 80s binary <laughs> virtual reality. <laughs> like, you just have to make it look stylized so that it's still visually interesting and different from the real world, but also not like, you know, the Star Wars prequels. 
I imagine we're going like I was actually going to make a Star Wars reference. Yeah. I imagine this is going to look similar to Tarkin in Rogue One. Oh yeah, where in that case, it's I'm... very photorealistic, but yeah. it has that uncanny valley amount of like it's not quite real. Yeah. Um, because like uh, although Ty Sheridan said he doesn't know what his avatar is going to look like. If they follow along with with the book, yeah, um, it would look very similar to him, but a little bit like better looking, and like taller, older, yeah. yeah, maybe a little bit older because he's he's like eighteen in the uh, in the book. Yeah, and I think Parzival was supposed to be like thirty or something like. Well, that. they play them as like just a generic adult, like, yeah, which would put them put you probably in your mid twenties, sure, um, on average. Yeah, uh, the so, average adult is in its mid in their well, mid twenties. Like, no, I got you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The average TV adult is in their mid twenties. Yes, thank you. I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise still plays a thirty year old. <laughs> You're not wrong. Even though he's like fifty something. Um, but this is very cool, and it explains why there hasn't been. We haven't seen more about them shooting. Yeah, because it's uh, all been mocap. It, yeah, so it's very easy to close the studio doors. Yeah, and just uh, when ping you're doing pong mocap. balls. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. This this is good news to me. It means that it's roughly like an hour. If it's a two hour movie, like an hour and twenty minutes of it is in the Oasis. That's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, uh, I've been looking forward to this. I I think we all have to prepare ourselves that if you're a fan of the book, it's not gonna be the book. Yeah. Uh, for better or worse, it will not be the book. And like, so don't go in with that expectation. If it's better than Ender's Game, then I think that's a win. That is not gonna be hard. Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. That movie is. I don't don't even get me started on the Ender's Game movie that came out on my birthday. It was oh, I am sorry. Oh, all right, let's talk about some sci-fi in real life very quickly. Yeah, sure. Uh, this was a crazy one uh, that my cousin's wife sent me. Uh, I didn't catch it. Hot source, guys. Yeah, but it was also it was from uh, I read an, it was an article on I effing love science. Yeah. Well, actually, there's going to be a lot of swearing later. I fucking love science. Okay. Um, just mark it explicit now, Neil. Thank you. Uh, they invented a, a real sonic screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing that happened. I mean, yeah, pretty exciting. Uh, so basically the way, that, the way that it works is it's got a bunch of like sonic emitters that it can send a, a sound through whatever it's being put in front of and can be used to either turn things or in... The medic in medical cases where it's yeah. the main application so far, it actually has been able to open up tissue. Yeah, very specifically to inject medicine in a non-invasive way. Yeah, uh, sound uh, we all know is a wave, and if you can control what frequency it vibrates at, you can then use that to move things in the physical world. And apparently, they found a way to kind of manipulate the frequency that it's vibrating at in order to do that. Yeah. But you have to match resonance. I mean, that's the same. That's the thing is like, you, you have to be able to figure out what the resonant resonant frequency is yeah. in order to move stuff. But they've basically been able to do this where they, they use this tool to like affect bodies and like, tur like guide things through. That's pretty cool. So, so doctors are using a sonic screwdriver. It, you're yes <laughs> it's awesome it's very cool uh but yeah i mean science continues to move forward uh, awesome. and it becomes real life yeah that's the title of that segment yep we um, figured it out <laughs> all right let's get into our main topic counting down our top 10 sci-fi movies and tv for 2017 uh let's just start off at number 10 yeah. we're gonna work our way up to number one uh jesse why don't you take away uh, yeah, this is a movie coming out. It's called Life. It's a it's a science fiction thriller. It's about a group of space scientists. They're going and looking for the origins of life and what it means to be alive. They find something. It infects them, and it's like this horror thing on the spaceship. It looks a lot like uh, Prometheus, but in a smaller story. Like, if Prometheus wasn't as big and they just made it a smaller story. Yeah, this is sort of like... Sort of Prometheus smashed into Apollo 13. Yeah. Um, it's Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Which big, is like... A huge cast. That's a big... That's a, those are big names yeah. for something like this. Um, I'll, like... 
this I want to see this movie because yeah. it looks cool. I hope that it does something beyond just virus out like intelligent virus in space because it, 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 it the the trailer yeah reads a little bit like the thing sure or Promethe like it reads very similar to those stories and I'm hoping that it does something new with it yeah it's, I think they kind of got to right <laughs> yeah but the visuals look amazing yeah it looks really pretty um and like I'll watch anything you said on the space station yeah same here basically speaking of pretty number nine the, looks real pretty the cure for wellness yeah uh, which is a Gore Verbinski movie yeah it's a psychological thriller uh that has some science fiction elements to it it looks really really good i'm gonna be there day one to see this it looks really good this one was not as high for me um it looks interesting i think that whatever trailer i saw first made me think too much of shutter island oh yeah it, it does kind of remind me i think the second trailer was much better because yeah. it didn't make me feel like i like it was telling me the whole story <laughs> Um, the first trailer, I was just like, so it's a guy who doesn't know if he's insane or not. Yeah. And I was like, that's... Sh but then there's like, there's some science fiction elements to it that look really interesting. Yeah, which the first trailer didn't show off. Yeah. Uh, the only problem I have with the trailer is it looks like there might be some deer ex machina. Uh, <laughs> deer ex machina? Yeah, it's a thing I've noticed a lot in movies like this, where it's like, someone's leaving a place that the movie that needs to take place in that place so a deer jumps in front of a car and, <laughs> and the person gets injured or their car gets broken so they can't leave whatever place they're leaving fair enough you know actually i hadn't noticed that pattern but you're right it that happens. happens fairly often there's in a, movies. there's the um uh jordan peele movie coming out as well uh that's like a science fiction movie and like the guy can't leave a village because of a deer as well like, I, I saw these two trailers back to back, and I was like, both of them have deer ex machina. What if, what if the deer are the ones controlling everything? Oh my god, I hope, I hope no deer hears this. Uh, do, do do deer have the podcast app? I or YouTube? I don't know. Oh god, dear. all right. <laughs> Let's go to number eight. Oh man, uh, number eight, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Uh, this is like looks I, we so haven't pretty. seen a movie, a good movie like this Jupiter in a Sunday. number. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say we haven't seen one of these in years. And then yeah. I was like, oh wait, I tried to block out Jupiter Ascending. Yeah. Um, but like this, like the the level of creature work, the design, like I haven't read these books, but I've it read a few looks of them. Just like I want to just like see it in a full IMAX, like take up all of my vi peripheral vision. This, with this world. This movie has my pick for the Guardians of the Galaxy Award this year, where it's something that is you know it's an established property, but not that many people know it. I. Uh, but it it's swinging big, and it's a director that is a cult director that has made some extremely big hits as far as, like, Leon or The Professional and then uh, The Fifth Element. Like, uh, Luc Besson is a fantastic director. Um, the comic books are really cool, guys. It's going to be space pirates. It's going to be, it, there's going to be, like, magic. It's going to be really fun. I'm really excited about it. Space pirates? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, pirates. But, but in, in space. space. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but uh, I, I had to put it in there. Stranger Things Season 2. I'm so jazzed for it. Uh, everyone's number one, like, most, an like, the biggest, like, surprise smash of 2016. Oh, yeah. Was Stranger Things. Because it came out of nowhere. It really did. Uh, like, Netflix... Like, I hosted the after show for it. Yeah. And, like, with Netflix. And we didn't even know it was a thing until, like, a month before. Because Netflix just... They, they kept it quiet. This is what they do with a lot of their stuff, is they don't get into it. Yeah, they really rely on word of mouth. Yeah. And then a couple weeks before, they finally let us know it. It just, like, was everywhere. It was huge. Um, and so we've got, like, they're adding cast to it. They are like we're gonna get more into like the the upside down. Yeah, I'm really interested to see where they go with the story. Uh, there's a lot of cool. M Night Shyamalan might be directing an yeah, episode. Well, let's... <laughs> Look, 
He once upon a time was a good director. I think if he had his hand, if his hands were off of the writing, yeah, it like that might be fine. Because remember, like in TV, the showrunners, the it's Duffer the brothers, person, are yeah. still in charge. Yeah, I think I think he might work well with this. As, yeah. if his hands are off the writing and editing, I think he might be able to really do a good job with it. Yeah, so I, I'm not a close to that idea. Sure, it is just like. He's now become a, a he has become the sort of a punchline. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, um, that what a twist thing became so viral. Yeah, um, number six. Sure, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I mean, I don't think you need to say anything yeah, else. Need I say more? It the trailer looks really cool. Uh, Blade Runner is a staple as far as science fiction fans go. Uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is such an amazing book. If you have not read it and you've only seen Blade Runner, uh, do read it. It's really the scene with the spider is one of the best scenes or parts of a science fiction book you'll ever read. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic, uh, and this movie looks good. Yeah, I mean we've only gotten the one trailer. Yeah. Um, and I didn't play. I didn't. I didn't prepare it to, to watch today because it's. It came out a while ago um, while we were off the air. But I think everybody's seen it by now. Yeah. Um, Ryan Gosling being involved. Ryan Gosling, although he is like the big hot actor, he's also good. Yeah. Like that's the thing. There's a lot of the like the A list actors when they get into movies. You're just like, oh, well. I mean, like I know you're popular, but whatever. But Ryan Gosling, I actually believe, will like put in the work to do this movie right and can and um, can easily like play a nuanced character where i assume we're not going to know if he's a replicant or not or yeah. something like that so which they said they're also going to be like playing with like vague they're going to be playing it vague as opposed like for uh harrison ford yeah um my brain i'm excited to see harrison ford try in movies again yeah, like well, between like, this and Star Wars, yeah. seeing him try is fantastic. Yeah, um, I thought he was gone after Ender's Game. Sure, like, when he all of his parts were shot on an iPhone. <laughs> but like his stuff in Ender's Game was, he, he was clearly phoning it in. Yeah, there was no interest level, um, even though he was great casting for that role. Yeah, um, but in but for Star Wars, he brought something that we know that everyone thought he didn't have anymore yeah um like not that he couldn't do it but that he just didn't he just didn't do it care anymore. to yeah but if he can deliver the performance that he brought to episode seven into this then it's gonna be great yeah um i'm excited to see this because i think it it has and it and it's coming from a director who put out what is my top movie of 2016 in arrival sure yeah um, like I will trust whatever that guy wants to do. Arrival was until so good. he proves yeah. otherwise with something, he can do it. Like whatever project, I don't care what property it Any is. Any franchise, yeah. Yeah, what a property, original, whatever. Yeah, he's like he's got my vote. Um, this one, I, I I debate on where to put it in the list, but it was we've been talking about it for so long. Yeah, it, it made it down this far. Alien Covenant, the sequel to Promethe Prometheus. Yes. Uh, don't, just don't worry about the name. <laughs> just don't worry about the name. It is the sequel to Prometheus. Uh, yeah, because Prometheus was a big letdown. Uh, it it was good. Like it was good at setting up a lot of science fiction themes. It was bad at paying anything off. Uh, I'm excited about this. the tr The new trailer looks really good and scary. Like I'm I'm excited for this type of thriller. Someone who Alien is my favorite movie. Uh, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I know you're a huge fan of that franchise. Yeah. So, do you, like, with Ridley Scott directing... That makes me happy. Very happy. Yeah, and so it'll be interesting to see how they weave in the Prometheus storyline, like, other than just Michael Fassbender. Yeah. With this, or if they're just going to sort of move on from that. It, from what I see in the trailers, it still looks like it's a proto-alien. Like, it's not quite the xenomorph that we see in the first movie. All right. We've got our, our little... Our little face, face hugger. hugger. He wants to hug your face. I mean, like, it's so cute. Like, I want to let him. Yeah, but, you should. <laughs> but you shouldn't. Yeah. You should not let the face hugger 
hug you. Nope. Um, this one I mean, I'm super excited about. Yeah, this looks really cool. Um, and so excited I want to like, ta- I want to talk about it at length. Uh, the circle. The sack. Um, which is coming out in April. Yeah. Um, and I, it's it when I was doing when I was doing research for this episode, that was when I found out about this movie. Oh yeah. I hadn't even seen the trailer or the heard anything. Real good. Um, I had I did, hadn't heard of the book. But I wanted to show you guys the trailer because it blew me away. Folks. Um, But yeah, let's take a look at the trailer for The Circle. It's it comes. It's uh, It's got Tom Hanks, Emma Watson, and Karen Gillan. Yeah, amongst others. Yeah. Um, He's not in the trailer, but Patton Oswalt apparently. How would you describe what The Circle is to, say, your grandmother? It's the chaos of the web made. Elegant. Speed round, Paul or John? Early Paul, late John. Mario or Sonic? Early Sonic, late Mario. Needs of the society or needs of the individual? Should be the same. You're most scared of? Unfulfilled potential. Like, interested, immediately in on that character. I am a believer in the perfectibility of human beings. When we are our best selves, the possibilities are endless. At the circle, there isn't a problem that we cannot solve. We can cure any disease and we can end hunger without secrets, without the hoarding of knowledge and information. We can finally realize our potential. Circlers, do you like to share? Share. So, Big Brother meets Apple. If it happens, we'll know. Imagine the human rights implications. I mean, it's like, uh, there needs to be accountability. John Boyega. What is this? Come on. The circle has the power to change everything. It's only our lives that get us in trouble. Things we hide. We care about everybody you care about. Because knowing is good. But knowing everything is better. It looks like an episode of Black Mirror. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But like to to the nth degree. Yeah. Um, it's just like there's. It looks real cool. It reminds me of the Social Network. Yeah. In all the right ways. Sure. Um, not just because of like I mean obvi- they're they're the obvious reasons. Um, the trailer really more than anything. I think it's the like the music, the way that they use the music, the uh, yeah the, way the music the is fantastic cut. in that. Um. I love all of these actors. Yeah. Um, like, There's not a all of them are are high on my list of people that I want, that I will see a movie because of. Yeah. Um, and just thematically, it looks really interesting. And looks uh, like like all good sci-fi, it looks like a, a theme that is relevant to us right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's asking a major question, like, what if giving up all of your privacy. What if opening yourself up to 100% transparency yeah. could ensure your safety? Yeah. Or the safety of others? Well, it's it's the theme we always talk about. Yeah. What's more important, safety or freedom? Freedom, yeah. Um, but this is a but this is asking it on a, such a personal level. Yeah. Um, that we oft, we often think about it in like terms of like the government or, and like how they can get into your stuff to or like the societal contract. Yeah, but yeah. this is what if like opening up your I, I, like there we should, we see the numbers and stuff floating. Like I haven't read this this book. I kind of want to just see the movie and then go back and read the book yeah. after <laughs> after seeing that. But like there are numbers floating that like seem to like attach to people. Like if if we have numbers, if like what if you knew like what everybody else made like money wise sure. around you would that change the way you interact with people it definitely would yeah it would obviously. for a lot of people yeah um if you knew just if if you knew what their uh clout score was which is that weird like thing that i remember checking out a while ago yeah um uh, i kept checking out because they would send me for you like nonsense in the mail uh but they they rank your social media with a number yeah like your presence and it like what if you just had that on your sleeve what would that do to society yeah 
We'll see in the circle. Yeah. Coming uh, soon. All right. And so this is where we get into, like, more... This is the, the block. The, the, like, block of stuff that, like... Like, okay, yeah. Uh, let's talk about Logan. Yeah. Uh, Logan comes out very soon, feels yep. like. We're, like, a month and a half away. Yeah, new trailer looks uh, The new so trailer cool. looks dope. Uh, uh, I said, fuck yes... Uh huh. A bunch of times, like loudly, uh, when I watched this. Uh, yeah, the X twenty two, twenty three, or twenty three. Uh, well, let's just let's let's take a look at the trailer. This is the new it. one that came out this week. Um, this is the Red Band trailer it's for so any of you good. kids that might be watching. I don't, Children don't yeah. watch Red Band, or do whatever. <laughs> Ask your parents for permission. Yeah. Computer, you're gonna play. <laughs> Please. Once you pop, you know, you just can't stop. I saw this without knowing it was the Logan trailer. Hello? Oh, that'd yeah. be fun. Yeah, you gotta pay for that, right? Hey. Come on. So that, Not I was like, oh! Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can I can only imagine what that would be. Just like, what? Yeah. Someone just shared it. an X-Men fan. This, I'm still unsure how I feel about it. Same here. Um, and they put out some comments that I haven't read Logan, full yet. I don't want to talk about it. Logan, but just stop. Be careful. I need the girl. What girl? Go get her. Uh-oh. I mean, like, they, this is the trailer where they're building up X-23. Yeah. Like. No. 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 Like, no holds barred. Like, this is who you're getting. That yeah. was the first one. I was like, fuck and yes. <laughs> yeah. And that was I said when I saw them in the not Red Band trailer. And then I watched this one. And where Wolverine just goes, fuck. Yeah. Like, and I was like, I have the same reaction as Wolverine. No way down. Whatever it is you think I am. She needs our help. Someone will come along. Someone has come along. I love the weariness that Patrick Stewart is bringing yeah. to the professor this at this is point. What like, life looks like people who love each other, a home. But he's still like that's a Professor X line. Yeah, this for sure. Take a moment. That's the line from a mentor. Feel it. Uh, Wolverine, Wolverine. Oh, yes. Still have time. The now, idea of those two, like, running around two together on fighting. Road, only one meal and hardly any sleep. She's 11, I'm fucking 90. Now, I don't know about you, but my theory is, is that Professor X is long dead and that he's just in Logan's head. Oh. And that it's just... That it's like either it's an echo of Xavier and it's just his powers manifesting, or it is uh, Logan kind of having a moral center. Interesting. In, like, because in the comic books, it's not Professor X, it's Hawkeye and he's blind. Uh, and it's very different. It's They're fighting future Hulk who's gone bad and killed everyone. Yeah, uh, the maestro. The maestro. It's Hulk with a beard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and who can, and who's, can talk. And who can talk. Yeah, Will yeah. is, is, is very smart. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really interested to see where they go with it. Uh, it looks so good. It looks so good. Uh, also, the music, so much better in that one than the other trailer. <laughs> I, I hated that they used Hurt. It was so on the nose. It took me out of that trailer, and I didn't like that original Logan trailer. I, I liked the original trailer. I thought it was um, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, the movie looks great, and like everything they've said about their approach to it looks good, and there's that's why it's our number three pick. Yeah. Uh, number two, the, so, okay, so... If we didn't want to just be listing Marvel stuff all day, like Logan is the Fox universe, so yeah. we separated it. Uh, if we didn't want to just have this whole list be Marvel properties, we so we had to condense it. So MCU. at number two is all the MCU crazy 
shit that is happening this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spider-Man, Homecoming, Thor, Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, The Inhumans, Iron Fist, and The Defenders. I'm going to add it in here. Shield, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is yeah. so good this year. Which hasn't been announced for Season 5 yet. No, but it's 2017 yet. right now, so... Um, <laughs> but there's so much... And, like, the thing is, like, the the movies, the stuff that's getting released in theaters, yeah. which includes The Inhumans, because yeah. it's going to be the first ever TV show released in an IMAX format uh, first. I'm so excited for that. Um... All their mo- all of these are like crazy stuff. Like Spider Man is the most sane one, but even that is taking an approach yeah. that it, you wouldn't think that they would ever do. The idea of a Spider Man movie that is more John Hughes than like than Superman. Yeah, uh, it, it's it looks amazing. All the stuff that we've seen for that looks phenomenal. Thor Ragnarok, like we've seen almost nothing except that it's gonna be the weirdest thing ever. I'm so excited for it. Like it makes Gu- Guardians a few years ago. Yeah, everyone was like, "That's the weirdest Marvel movie I've ever even thought was possible," and it was super successful. And Thor Ragnarok promises to put that to shame. Like it, Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Yeah, looks like it will be pretty normal and tame. Yeah, compared to Thor Ragnarok. I'm very excited for it. And then Iron Fist and the Defenders. I mean, we've seen we've now seen so many images of Iron Fist and the Des- Defenders. Uh, I freak out every time. I love Danny Rand's kind of altered modern costume. I think it looks good. It fits the character. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we still haven't seen like what it's we've, if he's going to don something. I mean, we no, we haven't seen golden slippers yet. Yeah, but. But we see like the green vest kind of thing. Yeah, we'll see. Well, like exposed. just like Luke Cage doesn't have a costume the way that like yeah. Daredevil does. Neither did Jessica Jones. And, no. Um, well, we'll see how that shapes out with them. Yeah. Um, the Defenders is they've started to finally do promo for it. Like they had an Entertainment Weekly spread. Yep. Which, by the way, did you hear that they announced that there's going to be a giant hallway fight sequence in the Defenders? Yeah, of course. There's, <laughs> as, I mean, as if we were surprised, but like just the idea that they're like, yeah, there's going to be a hallway fight, in, I, like a big one. In, <laughs> you gotta. My my theory. Yeah. Or my my want was like, okay, so the big like the whole. Yeah. Than Daredevil season two that they haven't explained yet. Yeah, uh, just, they walk into it, gravity shifts, and, it's and then hallway. it's just a giant hallway full of ninjas, <laughs> full of full of ninjas and gangsters, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, the whole and indeed. dragons. It's technically it's a dimensional rift known as the hallway. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Marvel looks like it's just gonna it's be just gonna nuts be so this year. Good. This I is mean, the most movies that three is the is the most movies they've released in a single year. This will uh, like between that and the it, minimum two TV shows that they're putting out this year. Uh, like between Iron Fist and Defenders, that's minimum two. That does not include if oh no three minimum three because in humans, yeah. um, does not include if Shield comes back or if something else gets or if like. Uh, I've heard that they are close to starting on, on and like they're very close to starting to, to having some announcements yeah. on uh, uh, Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, which um, would be exciting. Like nothing yet, nothing official, but like uh, I, I have little birds that, that, <laughs> well, that tell me that the stuff is in motion. It's yeah. not in turnaround or anything like that because we haven't heard anything except for the budget in a while. Um, but they are at work. Yep. On that one. Um, it, so much Marvel. Yep. And then, uh, Marvel Movie News, Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Go see it. Those guys know what they're talking about. They're yeah. fantastic. Um, Voice into it. Yeah. Well, I, I should reiterate, uh, although I'm not going to be regularly appearing on there, I will yep. be doing S.H.I.E.L.D. updates for Marvel Movie News. Great. Um, and uh, I will not be stopping Sci-Fi Weekly by any means. Good. Just as a reminder. Um, a bunch of people asked. Sci-Fi Weekly is going nowhere. Uh, all right. Number one. Uh, look, it's Star Wars. It's it, Granddaddy. Come on. It's Star Wars. It's Episode Granddaddy. Episode eight. It comes out in December. 
What did you think was going to be number one? It's your granddad. It's granddaddy. <laughs> it's Star Wars. It's, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, episode eight. Uh, like, it feels like almost anticlimactic for it to be number it, one. It does. It does. But, it, like, it, you can't put it anywhere else. We're also saying, like, the phrase, remember, we called this the most an- most anticipated. Yeah. Uh, we've been waiting because, like, I threw up the picture of Luke from the very end of seven. Yeah. Like, we've been dying for this for a year. Like, Since Rogue the- One, like, sort of, like, satiated us. It did. But it also was like, all right, so I put answer like because i went through and i watched all of them afterwards like yeah well all like four five six seven after i saw rogue one and it was like that reminder of like yeah i need answers i need to know what's next uh because episode eight in which we doesn't have an official title yet um we we're gonna get revenge find out who revenge of the return (laughs) oh my god (laughs) we're gonna find out who ray's parents are which is this major mystery it's been a huge debate I still say she's somehow a Kenobi. I don't have all the logic figured out yet. I think she is a Darth Vader clone. Interesting. Like, like, like they took her DNA and made a baby. Hmm. So basically, the X twenty three of yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, basically, like, like because that's why Luke's uh, lightsaber calls to her because it is originally his father's, uh, and that would also set her up. Like thematically, since uh, what's his name, the main villain, uh, Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren is like so obsessed with Darth Vader. Like thematically, the fact that she is technically, or at least genetically, is Darth Vader would set them up to clash even more and like set his That's... jealousy off the off the chains. Huh? You're the first person I've heard make that theory. Yeah. Uh, that's a new one, and that is very interesting. Uh, my main, the main reason I'm leaning on Kenobi is the that it when you if it's true when you go back and rewatch the battle from the end of seven, yeah, um, it becomes a perfect poetic mirror to the battle at the end of four. Oh yeah, because you have Kenobi and Vader, and then if she's a granddaughter, grandchildren, grand grandchild, grandchild, yeah, fi- refighting their their grandparents' battle. That's true. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's I mean, like, what else could we say about Star Wars? It's Star it's Wars. Star, it's guys. Um, some honorable mentions we wanted to shout out really quickly. Um, Star Trek. Discovery? Star Trek Discovery, but like we don't even know if it's coming out this year anymore. So it felt like that was why it didn't make the list. Yeah. Um, the space between us comes out in a few weeks. We're going to be reviewing that. Yeah, um, it looks. It looks, good. it looks interesting. Yeah. Um, sort of like the Marsh. Uh, it looks like it, it looks like um, not the Martian, but uh, 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 man with uh, 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 no. Uh, we're gonna get it. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, the stranger in a strange land. In a strange land. It looks like a it looks like a, a tweened up version of yeah. Stranger in a Strange Land. Stranger in a Strange Land diet. Yeah. Um, uh, Kingsman: The Golden Circle. Yeah. Uh, Kingsman: loved that Surprise comic. Hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I knew I knew it was gonna be like I read I read Secret Service like the the Mark Mal- Millar book and it was fantastic and then they made it a movie and the movie was almost better yeah um, uh, I threw this one because uh, tr- <laughs> it looks from- so silly and like Roger Corman is directing Death Race twenty fifty you guys all wanted another Death Race movie and we got it uh, I threw it on there just because like watching the trailer is like this could almost happen in the next four years yeah. Feel like it could. Um, Kong Skull Island Eugene comes Cordero. out soon. Uh, very nice guy. Yeah, very uh, funny improviser. God Particle, aka Cloverfield Three. Yeah, comes out in October. Very excited. Uh, Doctor Who's coming back. Guys, um, the Who. I'm excited for it to come back. Yep. Uh, I. It's not as as much. Doctor Who's one of my favorite shows of all time. I am yeah. less anticipating it this year because i have been underwhelmed by the last couple seasons last season um, it is there have been episodes where i thought were amongst the best and yeah. then episodes that i thought were amongst the worst and they play right next to each other and uh they haven't shown me anything in the previews for the season that has excited me sure at all um i on uh, the other hand peter capaldi is my favorite doctor i like capaldi yeah i love capaldi uh i think moffat has run out of stories to tell same here um so but New, uh, more new Doctor, new, more who? Yeah. Not this year. No, uh, not next this year, year, but next year. Yeah. Um, and net, like a few things that I saw from Netflix. Netflix is stepping up its sci-fi originals. They're going real, like not just in TV shows, but in movies. Yeah. 
um, the discovery, which is a about a which is like a, a psychological movie about a world where they discover scientific proof that the afterlife is real. Yep. Um, and then people start committing suicide to get there faster. Um, so it's it's very interesting. It just premiered at Sundance. To like, I saw some mixed reviews, but it, the premise is fascinating. Very interesting, yeah. Um, so I want to check it out. Eye Boy comes out this Friday. Um, I think we're going to be. I don't, we haven't we even just fully discussed it. Yet. I think we're going to be talking about it next week. We can talk about it next yeah. week. Yeah, we're going to talk about Eye Boy next week. <laughs> uh, silly That's... title for what looks like a really cool movie. By the way, you guys just had a a view into what planning for this show <laughs> looks like. We can talk about it next week. Yeah, sure. Well, we talked. Well, we watched the trailer last week. Yeah. You were sick. I was sick. Oh um, boy, Connor Hurley, everyone. Yeah, Connor Hurley. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things um, coming out this year it's, that didn't make this list, guys. So let us know. Could be a great year. Like, I want to know what your guys' top ten was. Like, if you disagreed with ours, you think we were in the wrong order. Put yours in the comments below, or tweet them to us. Let us know what you think. And if you don't want to give us a top ten, give us a top five. Yeah, or yeah, top anything. one. Just yeah. like, what's your most anticipated what you sci-fi about? movie this year? Yeah. Or like, what? Which one did we miss? That were, or did you? Th- yeah. Whatever th- comments you have, we yeah. want to. We want to know because we want to know if we missed any too. Yeah. Is there stuff that I hadn't heard about the circle before today? That's so good. And now it's. Now I'm like dying to see it. Yeah. So let us know. Um, people in the chat uh, are are also excited about a lot of these. Um, the Mummy. Oh so yeah, the says, Mummy. Oh, and uh, that looks interesting. At some point, maybe we'll get Rick and Morty season three. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, I also same thing would not have included it only because we don't know when we were supposed to get it last year. <laughs> I I will not. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. We're running. We're running over our time. The computer is looking angry at us. Angry computer. Uh, just says okay. Sci-fi moment of the week. Uh, if you've got one, uh, I have a real quick. I mean, <laughs> I have a real quick sci-fi moment of the week. Uh, yesterday was uh, the women's march, and I saw a lot of Princess Leia's and Rays <laughs> uh, running about. That was cool. Nice. Like just lots, lots of children and adult women dressed up as Princess Leia or Rey, and I was like, oh yeah. It's great to see people like embracing these uh, these stories and these characters also, also, as more than just like movies. Also, a couple Captain Janeways, which is also awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, send in your sci-fi moments of the week uh, to at Sci-Fi Weekly. Captain Travis, uh, who usually is, is sick. So yeah. Feel better, feel Captain better, Travis. Cap. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us live in the chat. Yeah, it has been a pleasure. Uh, hit us with a, a review on iTunes, please do, or uh, l- uh, like us on Facebook at Sci-Fi Weekly. Uh, I have been your host Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. Uh, also, be able to check. Uh, be sure to check out uh, my other after shows on AfterBuzz TV, our sister network. Uh, today, I'm talking about Grimm. On Tuesdays, I talk about Agents of Shield with Jesse Klein, yep. uh, as well as Megan Salinas and I am Tehran. Uh, <laughs> That's feel like that's his full name. Yeah. Uh, but be sure to check out my comic book, Kid Cop. It's available on Comixology. Guys, it's a great comic book. Uh, I'm Jesse Klein. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at JessKlein1. Uh, you can see me do the after show uh, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm a comedian. You can see me do comedy all around Los Angeles. You can follow me on Twitter or whatever. I'll talk about it probably. Yeah. Yell at us on Twitter. Do Please it. do. Uh, and be sure to come back next week for more Sci Fi Weekly, the show where we're only one lab coat away from being real scientists. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.